Welcome to St. James. I am Reverend Rowan, the new rector here at St. James in Bozeman, and I am so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. I invite you to stand as we prepare for worship.
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses 
and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us recite uh, Psalm 118 alternately, uh, changing at the asterisk in each verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. We shall not die, but live. And declare the words of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he will not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer the of the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He is the righteous to answer. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice in God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. You might be wondering, where is the end of the story? What happens after the women fled from the tomb in fear, saying nothing? Mark doesn't tell us. Not really, anyway. Scholars are relatively certain that this is where the most authoritative version of the Gospel according to Mark ends. Some Bibles include a bit more, a sort of Cliff Notes retelling of the stories after the resurrection from the other Gospels. But like most scholars, I think Mark ends here, in holy fear. Where is the good news of Jesus in fear? There are only two sorts of people in the Gospels who say, be not afraid. Angels and Jesus. I get it with angels. I can only imagine that they are terrifying up close. Whether they are completely inhuman, a mess of wings and eyes, or sitting right in that uncanny valley between human and not quite human. They're always unexpected. But Jesus, Jesus tells his followers over and over again not to be afraid, because places of fear are where he comes closest to those he loves. There are several stories in Mark's gospel that show this clearly enough for us to be able to fill in the blanks after Mark's Easter morning story ends. Early on in the pandemic, March four years ago, as I was struggling to bring my church online and be with my people as a pastor through their fear and my own, there were a few songs I listened to on repeat to keep myself going. One was a gospel song from 1962 called Peace Be Still sung by the Reverend James Cleveland and the Angelic Choir. It's a song about an episode from the fourth chapter of Mark, when Jesus was fast asleep in the boat while trying to cross the Sea of Galilee, and a terrible storm blew up. The disciples were terrified. Sure, they were about to capsize and drown, though why a bunch of fishermen didn't know how to swim, we don't know. But terrified that they were about to die, they woke Jesus from what was probably a very well-deserved nap. Jesus quietly said to the storm, peace, be still. And the wind and the waves immediately stopped. 
Unfortunately, this backfired somewhat, as seeing Jesus control the weather made the disciples even more afraid of him than they already were. Jesus tried to comfort them, asking them why they were afraid. Didn't they know he was with them? But the disciples, the original hard-headed Jesus followers, didn't learn what Jesus hoped from the experience. Not that time, or the next several. Because soon the disciples had another Jesus meets water scare in the sixth chapter of Mark, when Jesus, looking for the shortest route from point A to point B to keep up with his busy schedule of being the Messiah, decided that the shortest route was straight across a lake. The disciples, unsurprisingly, were terrified. They thought Jesus was a ghost and likely screamed a lot. <laughs> Jesus simply told the disciples, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he climbed into the boat with them after walking on the water. The disciples were utterly astonished, but still they did not understand. In moments of pure terror for his followers, fear of drowning, the fear of seeing a ghost of a loved one, fear of any, any unexplained thing, Jesus was always calmly, quietly there with them. So the women on Easter morning, having been told by a mysterious person clad in white that Jesus wasn't there and not to fear, set themselves up for a Jesus moment. I imagine that what happened next was that they ran, possibly quite literally, into Jesus on his way to be with his grieving, terrified followers, and that Jesus turned and quietly told them not to be afraid, for he was with them, to have faith that even in the times of greatest turmoil, he would be there with them always, no matter what. That song, Peace Be Still, was such a comfort to me four years ago because as the tempest raged around us all in one of the greatest periods of fear and uncertainty that many of us have ever lived through, I heard Jesus speaking through the words of the song. When I listened to it over and over and over again, Jesus wasn't just talking to the storm. Jesus was talking to me, telling me, Peace, be still. There's no reason to be terrified. Have faith, for I am with you. Even when it feels like I have gone away, when everything is falling apart, you are never alone. Perhaps it's a bit harder for us than it was for the women and Jesus' other followers after the resurrection. And it wasn't easy for them either, as Mark tells us. The person of Jesus isn't physically with us, speaking calmly and quietly, putting a hand on our, on our shoulders and telling us to take a few deep breaths. But when I turn inward, when I most need it, I feel Jesus like a balm on my soul. The smallest spot of warmth and comfort in the midst of a swirling storm and when I turn my attention to that sensation and tend to it as to a newly kindled flame, I find that it grows. That even when the world feels like it's going to hell in a handbasket, Jesus is there, and I am not alone. Alone, I am afraid. But with Jesus, I can face fear. We can face fear. And that is some good news this Easter. Amen. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty.
The prayers of the people can be found on page seven in your bulletin. God of love, we rejoice with angels in all the host of heaven as we celebrate the resurrection of your son. Bless today's joyful celebration and turn our hearts to you with new delight and commitment. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of mercy, bring your church to new life. Awaken in us a faithfulness that manifests itself in joy, in dedication to work of reconciliation in the world, in care for your creation, in awe of your glory. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of wholeness, bring those who suffer to new life. We pray for those who bear the burden of pain and anxiety, whose relationships are shattered, whose lives are full of despair. Lead us to find ways to pres be present with them and reflect your love for them. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of light, bring those in authority to new life in the ways they lead their nations. Show them the path of integrity and truth, that their people may live in peace, that all may have plenty. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of eternity, we give thanks for those who have gone before us and have entered into new and everlasting life in your presence. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us grant one another with a sign of God's peace. everyone. You may be seated. I have just a couple of announcements for you this morning. First, I am so glad that you all are here. Thank you. It is joyful to celebrate with so many people in such a full church. <laughs> Even the organ's happy about it. We had a bit of a mistake when we were printing the bulletin and we did not get our Easter flower list included. So I wanted to share uh, who has donated our Easter flowers this year and who they are in memory of. This year our flowers were donated by Dale and Thomas Bray, by Laura Catlin in loving memory of her parents, the Reverend George and Thurza Zabriskie, by Britt Ide in memory of her parents, Jeanne Uhl and Richard Persky, by Ron and Linda Hosef, by Shauna Kirsten in loving memory of Joan Anderson Kirsten, Shirley Trinnell, and Jesse McDermott, by Christine Roby, in loving memory of Jeanne and Harold Roby and Marjorie West, by Judy Singh, in memory of Dale Tolliver, 1953 to 2003, by Vicki Van Rennesleer, in thanksgiving for the invaluable service to the St. James Parish, for the family of Lois Ruth Elvers, Dr. Donald Robert Rollins, and Richard Zeno Swingett, who have all returned to God this year. And by Jessica Wilson, in honor of Florence M. Kelly, 
aka G-Flow. <laughs> My two other announcements are this. One is if you are a person who's interested in Easter egg hunts, unfortunately you came to the wrong service. <laughs> There's going to be an Easter egg hunt after our 11 o'clock service, but I believe we have some Easter bags to go. <laughs> have they been located? Excellent, they have been located. So they're still, you will not be completely without, I promise. Uh, my ushers are giving me the nod that yes, we found them, which is good. This uh, Easter tide, we're going to have a confirmation class for adults. It's also an inquirer's class. So it's for anybody who is interested in learning more about the Episcopal Church or who might be interested in confirmation. In the Episcopal Church, we recognize confirmations from other traditions, such as the Roman Catholic Church or the ELCA, but then you can be received into the Episcopal Church to transfer your denominational affiliation. Those classes are going to be on Mondays at 7 p.m. starting April 8th for six weeks. There's more information in your bulletin and on our website. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. Um, but then again, I think that most nerdy church things are going to be a lot of fun, so <laughs> take that as you will. But we're excited to offer this to the diocese so we won't be the only church participating. There will be a few others which will help us broaden our conversation. The other sacramental announcement that feels relevant today is that our next baptism day will be on Pentecost, which this year is May 18th. If you or someone you know or love might be interested in baptism, uh, either, either at Pentecost or one of our next baptismal feasts, the first step is to send me an email. And my email address is on the back of your worship bulletin where it says contact Reverend Rowan, and I would be happy to chat with you. The preparation for that is much less arduous than it is for confirmation. Just entails a one-on-one -on -one meeting, uh, either with the individual to be baptized or their parents, usually lasts 45 minutes to an hour, and then you're ready to go and be welcomed into the body of Christ. All things come from thee, O God, and of thine own we give to thee. Amen. Amen.
God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into everlasting heritage of your children, that with St. James and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, our 
for the people of God. And this is God's altar at St. James. Wherever you are on your journey with God or towards God, you are welcome at this feast.
please rise in body or spirit. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth the people, forgiven, healed, renewed, so that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Amen. 